I am convinced that gold and silver will dominate over the U.S. dollar. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. First, I want to thank a great member of our community for sharing a video with me, Silver Trooper. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'll put your channel link in the description below. But uh, thank you so much for sending uh, a video that I want to share with you, or at least a small clip of it. He suggested that I watch uh, this video from Christopher Aaron. He's a market uh, analyst, a global market analyst. And his premise is that we're going to see something coming out of the Fed soon akin to what happened in 2011. Okay, He thinks something big's coming. He thinks it's going to short-circuit our current run-up, mostly in gold, but maybe even silver soon. And, you know, I, I just want to be fair here, too. Um, this guy, Christopher Aaron, he's probably a very, very bright individual, um, and he's all for precious metals, you know, fundamentally. He even believes, as I do, that silver and gold should back our currency once again. So, He's got a lot of good things to say, but listen to his analysis on where he thinks gold and silver is going uh, soon. So the first round of QE was somewhere like 750 billion, and then there was another uh, six or 700 billion in QE2, and that gave us the rise in gold here all the way to the top. Now, what happened at the top? What changed? Operation Twist. Operation Twist was announced on Feb uh, excuse me, September 21st, 2011. They were not going to print any more money. It was going to be a swap. That's why they call it a twist, Operation Twist. This coincided with within a few days of the all-time peak in gold here. And so think about it from a logical standpoint. We had the entire market for three years pricing in further money printing, further money debase, uh, debasement, monetary debasement, more stimulus, more stimulus, right? The gold market thought that was just going to keep happening forever and gold was going to keep rising, keep rising, keep rising. Because a significant amount of the late buyers here in gold who were expecting QE to continue forever then said, oh, wait a minute, it's not continuing, get me out of here. Fast forwarding, we had QE3, 4, 5 causing the base here. And what did we have just recently? QE to infinity. This leads to a very strong probability that what is going to happen is that we have something that is going to be like an Operation Twist Part 2 that is going to enter this market at some point within the next year. What happens when all of a sudden they say, actually, we're going to pause or stop for a while. That is what's going to cause the next top into gold. I suspect we are close to it. It could be a little bit later in this year after one more peak. All right, let's 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 just stop right there, okay? <laughs> uh, I think he's wrong here. And I'm not trying to say the Yankee's smarter than Mr. Aaron, okay? He's, he's probably a lot more skilled in a lot of ways than I am. And I know he is primarily... You know, a trader, he's trying to uh, pick a good entry point, uh, get out, buy low, sell high <laughs> with gold and silver. Uh, I'm not primarily a trader, so uh, that means a little less to me than it would to him. But um, let's talk about what he was saying uh, around Operation Twist. I remember Operation Twist. It was a, a really interesting sleight of hand that they pulled. I remember the stock market rebounding. I remember gold and silver halting their runs up in 2011. But why? Why did that happen? I believe it happened because then Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke successfully hoodwinked the nation. No, the whole world, actually. When he appeared before Congress and said that the printers would stop going burr, okay? <laughs> that all the currency printing that they were doing was temporary. That all the uh, Fed debt monetization, you know, would be unwound. Okay, he went to great lengths to convince everyone that 
that the 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 brain trust at the uh, Federal Reserve had an exit strategy, and everyone bought the lie, hook, line, and sinker. They really thought they had the exit strategy. They thought they were going to do that, but they didn't. I think this time they're not going to buy any lie that the Fed comes out with. The pretense is gone, people. Not only has the Fed actually signaled that it is infinite this time, but but not only that, no one believes this monetary madness is ever really going to be unraveled. In fact, <laughs> I think we are witnessing a paradigm shift. And I'm going to explain at the end of this video, what I think that paradigm shift specifically entails and where I believe gold and silver is going to end up. So, you know, don't dare click some stupid, you know, cat video you see on the right-hand side of your screen, all right? Stick with me. <laughs> I do not believe there will be any uh, Operation Twist or, or, or some such machination this time by the Fed. No. The money printing will not be tapered this time. The balance sheet is not going to stop growing and uh, interest rates will not be normalized. Interest, <laughs> interest rates. Ah, uh, yes. How quaint. Remember when interest is, you know, <laughs> especially for you uh, millennials, <laughs> interest is the time value of money, right? And it's a, it's a, it's a, a relic of the past right now. Um, we don't get any interest at the bank. No, it is zero interest rate policy. ZERP. Indefinitely. So, why am I convinced that this stuff right here is going to dominate over that? Well, first got to see this battle for what it is. This is a battle. This is silver against fiat currency. This, this gold and silver... It, it, it's a vote of no confidence in this. See, we have a mother of all dollar bubbles right now. And frankly, if you think that dollar bubble is going to last, then you don't want any of this stuff. Oh, okay, maybe... Maybe some of some of this stuff. This this you know this, this is pretty cool. Uh, you know maybe maybe you're interested in in um, you know having silver for nostalgic purposes to, to to collect. And I am I am collecting these uh, items in the middle here uh, as part of my Yankee uh, Constitutional Silver series. I should probably say that quiet so my son doesn't hear it. But I'm still successfully uh, shielding him from the knowledge that I am collecting. Uh, the, the the best quality I can. I'm gonna put something together for him, something to remember uh, what real money is, what it, what it was, and uh, hopefully he'll appreciate it when he's older. But anyways, other than that, <laughs> you shouldn't be stacking gold and silver if you think the dollar is gonna survive and just keep flourishing. The bubble's gonna keep growing uh, infinitum. But let's examine the value proposition of currency, specifically the 10-year U.S. Treasury note. Now, whoa, whoa. for all of you who just heard 10-year U.S. Treasury note and your eyes are starting to glaze over, no, d stop. D get your finger away from the mouse or the, or the screen. Just, just stop, okay? <laughs> Don't click away. This is really important. I want you to hear this out. Let me just baseline it for you. A treasury is like an IOU. It's a promise to pay. In the past, uh, it was a, an ingenious way for the government to raise money outside of taxes. You lent the government some of your money, some of your currency, I should say, and they would pay it back with interest. And pretty nice, huh? <laughs> and they came in three flavors, all right? Uh, treasury bills, treasury notes, and treasury bonds. The, the, the uh, treasury bills, or T-bills, as they're sometimes called, uh, lasted for or, or matured in months, three months, six months, 12 months. That's what a treasury bill uh, is. A treasury note, they lasted or matured for two, three, five, ten years. 
And the Treasury bond matured in 30 years. Quick little Yankee side note. <laughs> After college uh, in uh, 1988, I, I had a pretty good paying job right out of college. I, I saved my money. I, you know, I paid off my uh, college debt in one year, actually, interest-free. That was the day, right? <laughs> Uh, and I worked really hard. I saved and saved and saved. Uh, I actually saved twenty thousand dollars in the bank, and uh, you know that that's a lot of money, uh, at least for a twenty-year-old or twenty-something. Um, so what I did is I walked down from where I was working in Boston and I uh, went to the Federal Reserve Building, took the escalator up, slapped down a twenty thousand dollar bank check, and bought. A T bill, a 12 month T bill, uh, paying out 6% in interest. That was uh, $1,200 in interest to let the government have my money <laughs> for a year. Okay, so that <laughs> is a T bill. The 10 year Treasury note is the um, de facto standard, if you will, for dollar based investment and savings all around the world. All right, that 10-year treasury is the big kahuna. All right, so that's the bellwether. That's what people watch. And <laughs> Jim Grant, uh, an economist, uh, a well-known economist and an author, calls the 10-year U.S. treasury note a return-free risk. Read that again. Return free risk. In other words, you, you get nothing for that IOU. You, you're, you're promised to lose money. Wrap your, your mind around that for a minute. And the very fact that trillions and trillions of dollars are parked in a return-free risk asset, I say asset, is the very definition of a bubble. Stick with me here. Let's, I, I want to examine this, uh, this dollar bubble with you. Okay, let's, let's get the tail of the tape, if you will, and see how uh, weak <laughs> this combatant is in the uh, fight, if you will, against precious metals. There are three characteristics. I'm going to name them one, two, three. First is inflation. Second is credit worthiness. And the third is risk reward. So let's talk about inflation, the first one first. We have debased. Frankly, we've counterfeited our currency. And now <laughs> we're overdosing on currency printing. Call it quantitative easing, if you'd like. You know, we've taken our money supply to astronomical levels. Look at this chart, M2. Yeah. Okay, yes, and you macroeconomic wonks out there are probably going, Yankee. Inflation is also a factor of other things, you know, like uh, economic growth measured in uh, GDP. And, and, and what about velocity, Yankee? You know, the, the speed currency circulates around the economy. That's in there too, that's a factor, yes, yes. Economic growth, is a factor. Velocity is a factor in inflation. I'm not trying to, to uh, be too in the weeds here, but just, just remember, economic growth has been stagnant for years, long before this medical crisis we're going through right now. And velocity, once this medical crisis abates, I believe velocity is going to take off. So that aside, inflation, inflating our currency is out of control. That's one characteristic. The second one I mentioned was credit worthiness, or maybe I should say credit unworthiness. A question for you. What is the quality of the one issuing those 10-year treasuries we were talking about? You know, the U.S. federal government. It's horrendous, folks. $22 trillion in liabilities going up least three trillion this year, I, I would guess, at least. In fact, it went up a trillion in a month, 120 trillion in off balance sheet or unfunded liabilities like, you know, Social Security, uh, Medicare. So we are in no way 
worthy of good credit quality. We should be junk bond status as a nation. The third characteristics of this, uh, you know, uh, dollar bubble is the reward we get for taking the risk with a 10-year uh, junk treasury note. Six-tenth of one percent. It's the reward? Six-tenth of one percent? <laughs> In a currency that the uh, Congressional Budget Office describes as losing 1.6% every year? How is that worth the risk? So there you have it, guys. Those are the three, you know, tail of the tape characteristics in this battle between currency and gold and silver. Again, the fact <laughs> that everyone is willing to park their money in a place that the government guarantees you're going to lose money. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know about what is going to happen and why I am absolutely convinced gold and silver will dominate fiat currency. So where does this all lead? And I promise to, you know, tell you where I think we're going here and... And let me just say that when I say this, <laughs> there are going to be people out there that hear it and say, no, Yankee, you're betting against our country. You know, do you want us to fail? No, I don't. Uh, and I'm not betting against our country. I'm protecting myself and my family against the reckless behavior of our nation. You know, <laughs> whether it's Consumers spending more than they should with debt to keep up with the Joneses and, and, and never saving anything for a rainy day. Or, or companies buying back their stock in record amounts with debt. You know, governments bailing out everybody with debt. And central banks encouraging all this recklessness with low interest rates and money printing. That, that folks, that is what I Eight. And that is not what this nation was founded on. It's not the American way. You know, another quick little Yankee side story. I remember paying off my house with my wife, and we were excited. We were we were, we were almost done with this big debt. And I was in my 40s, and and I remember, um, you know, we wanted to have our house assessed again. And I had a, a, a realtor come in, you know, and, and sit down and show us. And, and I'll never forget what that realtor said. The realtor looked at us and said, this is wonderful. You're in such great financial shape. You can now sell this house and upgrade. You can supersize it. I said, no, actually. Um, we're looking to pay off our mortgage and live a debt-free life. And she looked at us with the biggest eyes and said, well, that's not the American way. Oh, what do you mean that's not the American way? It, it's what has become the uh, American way, debt. It's not the way it was when our nation was founded. Um, thrift, savings, investment, opportunity, sound money, Okay, I'm on a rant here, but you get what I'm saying. That's the American way. I love our nation and what it represents. I, I love America as a true patriot. In fact, you know, do, do, do me a favor. Put um, uh, Yankee and I are true patriots in the comments. The uh, 13th person to do it, <laughs> for our uh, 13 stripes on our flag, wins this mercury dime. Yeah, one guess per person, please. <laughs> Put that right there. So what do I see happening? I think our government is going to try to prove that modern monetary theory, MMT, <laughs> is not a theory, but a fact. That we need uh, universal basic income. That a Fed coin wallet is in all our best interests. That democratic socialism is actually good for us. That's what I see coming. And, and put as starkly as I possibly can, I believe stagflation is going to rage soon. 
The dollar will give up its reserve currency status and our empire will collapse under its own weight in debt. In my opinion, gold is going to rise three, five, ten thousand dollars an ounce, measured in, in currency, of course. And I don't think that's hyperbole. No, I think that is numerically logical. And in my opinion, uh, silver is going to explode, rising by uh, a much higher percentage than gold. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see $200 an ounce. I think that's numerically logical with what's going on. But I, I do think you need to wait maybe a little longer for silver, you know, uh, possibly until we get past this uh, uh, temporary deflationary period that we're in. I mean, we've got collapsing uh, industry and businesses. I think silver's true potential will happen and be shown, but it's, I think it's going to take a little bit longer than gold. So when do I think all that's going to happen? You know, I, I have my thoughts on that. And, and, uh, and, and I, I have my thoughts on when I plan on re-energizing my silver purchases too. But, you know, no one knows for sure. But I do know what's coming. As sure as tomorrow. And when it does, gold and silver will dominate. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, you know, give me a like, you know, the thumbs up. And, and check out the link below. You'll see the link to Silver Troopers uh, channel. Really appreciate that. But you'll also see some other really cool links. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.